This podcast is brought to you by KidsMed, a program set up at the Great North Children's Hospital in Newcastle, and by the Royal College of Pediatrics and Child Health. This episode is about learning why we should all love our pharmacists. I'll let the families know that we are here to help them, to help the patients take the medicines. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are all of these children on liquid medicines? Why are they not all on capsules? He says, will I be able to take tablets by next week? I went, no. I said, you'll have, you'll be taking tablets in about half an hour. All right. Hello, Nicola. It's really nice to meet you today. My name is Emma Lim and I'm a general paediatrician. I work at the Great North Children's Hospital in Newcastle upon Tyne. And we're here to talk about kids med and the art of pill swallowing. So this episode is about learning why we should all love our pharmacists. And we'll be talking to some of our pharmacy staff and thinking about how they can help us work on teaching children to swallow pills. And I guess that's one of the things that I was thinking that it's a kind of like the secret life of pharmacists, because I don't really think we know much about what you do. Hello, Emma. Um, my name is Nicola. I'm the lead pharmacist in the Great North Children's Hospital. And I have worked here for just over 10 years and uh, worked as a, a paediatric pharmacist in a, a large teaching hospital in London before I came here. So I've probably worked... Um, in children's services for about 15 years now. Yeah, so we um, have worked together on the uh, pill swallowing project, but in terms of the, the secret life of a pharmacist, I guess my introduction to this project came about because um, pharmacists kind of, as well as checking drug charts and telling nurse and staff how to give infusions in hospital, are quite often the backstop of helping to sort out any problem which is medication related. What we've certainly noticed in the Children's Hospital over the last five to 10 years is that as the, the developments in medicines have evolved and we've got better at treating children, we have started to have more challenges in terms of actually getting medicines into children. So you're like a troubleshooter. You just, when we mess up or when we do do something right, you go in, fix the problem and come out before we've even noticed that you were there. Sometimes, yes. And, and I think pharmacists sometimes get a bad rep. So, you know, on Twitter, we're seen as people who come along and nitpick at drug charts and um, tell doctors what they've done wrong all the time. It's more just that we want to be really helpful and, and help to solve problems and make sure that we can reduce errors um, and, and stop anything bad from happening as a personality trait and um, we're all fairly risk averse individuals. You know I think you're right I think that um, doctors hate being told they're wrong yeah. in any way we're really bad at taking criticism even positive constructive criticism so you ringing up and saying oh you know you prescribed this wrong we're immediately a bit like mm -mm, mm -mm. So let's go back. We've talked about pharmacists and their role, and a paediatric pharmacist is actually a very specialist kind of pharmacist. Tell me how you got involved in the Kids Med project. <laughs> um, so we have children that are on lots of different and complex medicines, and we know from feedback from families that they have a lot of problem getting hold of these medicines. So sometimes the GPs won't um, prescribe an ongoing supply. So we set up a project to sort out a process for getting medicines to families. And we were um, kind of at a, a point in time where we were wondering what step to take next. And then Yincent, who was the doctor running the project, bumped into you in the corridor and said, we have loads of children who are having problems to get in hold of their medicines. And you said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are all of these children on liquid medicines? Why are they not all on capsules? 
And we said, well, because they're children and they need to be on liquids. And you said, well, do you not train them how to swallow capsules and tablets? And we said, no. <laughs> and you said, why not? And we said, because we don't know how to. It was kind of the, the, the door that opened to kids meds when we realised that actually we had a hospital full of children that were taking liquids that had never been taught how to swallow capsules. We'd never considered that actually the solution to the problem that we had was not about supply. It was about the kind of medicine that we were trying to supply to them. And that actually, if we give capsules, you know, as opposed to giving one bottle of liquid that might have a very short expiry date, then actually you can give months and months worth of medicines to somebody. Um, and that actually quite often we have liquids that are unlicensed. And so this was where pill swallowing came about, really. We had a, a group of uh, physicians and nurse specialists who were doing it in HIV clinics um, and, you know, going about their job and, and doing that very, very well and assumed that the rest of the hospital was doing the same and we weren't. <laughs> That is so true. So that assumption that one department, because one department knows what to do, that they've talked to any other department. Absolutely. And I think happen. you said to me, do you know how to train somebody how to swallow capsules? And I kind of, you know, hung my head and said, no, uh, being a paediatric pharmacist for years and years and years, I know how to do inhaler counselling and I know how to do warfarin counselling in adults and, you know, all of the other things that we got trained as, as a pre-reg pharmacist and as a junior pharmacist and things that went into our um, clinical diplomas. But nobody had ever taught me how to teach somebody how to swallow tablets or capsules. I know. The irony that pharmacists yes, absolutely. who spend their life making pills aren't taught how to swallow tablets or teach other people how to swallow absolutely, tablets. Absolutely, yeah. How did that make you feel? Oh, I felt really just quite bad about it. You know, like it's something that, and I think particularly once I'd been shown how to do it, I was like, this is so simple. Like, I, why had I never been shown this before? And why is it not more widely um taught uh so so I felt really bad and a bit embarrassed um and then I was like actually this is going to open up doors so let's totally embrace this let's get the pharmacy team on board and let's roll it out fantastic so tell me some of the obstacles you faced um finding the time <laughs> <laughs> so so you know um getting everybody together to do the training session um and then rolling it out and the other thing is that people from other hospitals have come to me and said um how have you done it how have you made it work and actually I think the difference at our hospital has been that there's very much been a driving force behind it with yourself and Ailsa but it's not been a pharmacy project. And we've gone to individual teams and taught them how to do it. And the nurse specialists and the play specialists have really embraced it and taken it on um, and can see the benefits of doing it. So Nicola, I think that's really important. One of the obstacles is time. It's always time, time and money. One of the other obstacles was getting the teams together but one of your successes was because this was a multidisciplinary project, not just through pharmacy. Agreed. So it involved um, doctors, nurses, play specialists, everybody. Did you have any quick wins that you want to share? Um, I think because we hadn't ever run, ran it out across other specialities we did a a test a pilot with the renal team and of course they had a lot of immunosuppression and so actually when we did it with them and we converted things like tacrolimus -really suspension across to capsules we saved a lot of money very very quickly 
I mean, that's so true. So we just picked this one department and we chose one pill. We targeted tacrolimus and just changing them from tacrolimus syrup to tablets. How many people did we convert that first time? Was it like 10? Something like that, yeah. 10 children, we saved 50,000 pounds a year recurring costs. I think that was one of the classic things that in that pilot, we just looked at the renal department and we focused on changing them from tacrolimus tablets to syrup. And I think we converted tens of children, not that many. And just with that drug alone, changing them from syrup to tablets, we saved tens of thousands of pounds every year, like in the region of 30 to 50,000 pounds a year. Yeah. And, and the cost saving was a side effect of the fantastic project. So often, you know, because of the NHS finance at the minute, we have to go out with cost saving projects. Whereas with this one, the cost saving was a, a, a perk, a, a benefit, a one of the many benefits. And it was the first time I'd come across a project like that. Yeah, I think that you can't be driven by cost savings. You've got to be driven by doing the right thing. Exactly. And then money will follow. Yeah. All right. So we talked about... Um, how did, how did it change you? Um, it made me much more open-minded to be challenged. So from when you challenged me about, did I know how to do it? It made me realise the power of a corridor conversation and working with, you know, these fantastic people that individually are all doing great things. We need to tie all of those up together. And it made me realise how quite a small thing like teaching somebody how to swallow capsules can have such a large knock-on beneficial effect in their life. And um, what would you like to see happen next? So I think the thing with this project is it's been fantastic, but we need to keep the momentum going. We need to continue on making sure that we are, um, as people and children come into hospital, training them how to swallow capsules and tablets. And we need to embed this as part of the pharmacy psyche. So by working with the local university to make sure that their undergraduate students are trained. Fantastic. And I think that's so important. In fact, we put it with our teaching fellows, we embedded it into the medical students and nursing students training where they did a session jointly, nurses and doctors together. So they're learning a new skill together. And they all really enjoyed it. And it helped them develop that relationship that they're going to have to have their whole working life, just working through problems together. So everybody was, everybody loved it's it. So win-win. They got to eat sweets, they were happy. Yeah. <laughs> all right, excellent. And um, we talked about the, the secret life of pharmacists but I think there's something about the secret power of pharmacists because certainly I was like I was ignorant of the breadth and the depth of pharmacy and what it covers and since we started this project um, I've met lots of pharmacists lots of different pharmacists so pharmacists specialist pharmacists like you pharmacy technicians and academic pharmacists absolutely yeah. Hi, Lisa. So nice to meet you today. And, yeah. um, you're a pharmacy technician. What does that actually mean? What do pharmacy technicians do? So a pharmacy technicians does a lot of clinical work with patients. Um, we do the drug histories, which means that we go and make sure that they see what the patient was on previous before they came into hospital. And we make sure that the doctors actually prescribe it correctly. Um, we do a lot of counselling with the patients, i.e. pill swallowing, but we do other counselling as well. We work with families and children. Oh my God, I'm so ashamed. I feel like it's all the things <laughs> that I didn't do in my history that you have to then come and do on the ward. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean, Rose. So, yeah. <laughs> I know. I, I feel Not like... finding fault, just making everything correct. Making everything yeah. correct, yeah. Everything correct. So when I say, uh, you want any medicines, have you got any allergies? Uh, I just put nil, NKDA, no known drug allergies. That's all I ever write. And I feel bad. 
All right. So you said you go and you take a proper full drug history. Mm -hmm. You check all their previous medicines. Mm -hmm. And then you said you actually work through all the sort of problems with families. So you do face-to-face -face work. We do, yeah. We do a lot of work with families. We have um, like autistic children who point blank refuse to have medication. So we have to try and find a solution as to how to get that medication into them. We'll have obviously children who just point blank refuse to take medicines. We liaise with the place specialists. We do, we work with different people, but mainly with the families. I'll let the families know that we are here to help them, to help the patients take the medicines. And we have had quite a lot of success stories with the patients. So your role is to work face to face with the yeah. families. Yeah. I mean, I'm like feeling even more like in awe now. <laughs> And there's a lot of fear around pills and pill swallowing. There is, yeah, a lot of anxiety. So how do you, can you give me an example of a time where you've taught somebody to swallow a pill? How has it changed your role? It's changed it massively, actually, because we do use this quite a lot. We did have a, a teenage boy on Ward 1B. Um, one of the nurses came to me and asked me if I could work with him and his mum. Um, because he had major anxiety issues of swallowing tablets and liquids. Initially, he was having liquids, but this patient came in with nil reg meds, so he, he wasn't on any regular medication. So this child had never taken any medication before in their mm. life, and then they came into hospital yeah. and were expected to take... So he was on, on an array of different med medications, like antispasmodic pain relief, just so many different medications and it was causing them so much anxiety they've asked, they asked me to go and have a chat with them um he was on a lot of liquids and people just assume children take liquids but that's not the case um obviously the taste of the liquid of some of them are nice some of them are not so nice um both both i think that's so true so many doctors don't understand how bad some of the medicines taste. Yeah. <laughs> every single time, every single year, I come and get a bottle of blue cloxacillin. Oh. <laughs> and I take oh. it around the junior doctors and I say, taste this. And they're all gagging. And I say, you will never prescribe this again as a liquid. Because if you can't swallow it, how can you expect a four-year-old to swallow it? Yeah. <laughs> that's right yeah so the taste of the syrups are bad yeah it, so we're going back to this child who was a teenager he was on four or five medicines loads of them tasted bad he was really anxious about it yeah and it, it's not so much the taste of the medicine it could be the volume as well there's obviously we have some patients who are volume restricted so obviously giving tablets is more beneficial um but this particular boy he was he was willing to work with me because he knew I told him that I could make him succeed. I would let him not make him succeed, but help him succeed. Um, and the mum asked me, why are you so confident? What if he can't do this? I said, but you will do this. This is, we have been trained to do this and something so simple can be so effective. So we set up a little meeting to have a chat. I took up everything in, set everything up and I reassured this boy, I don't know if I'm allowed to say his name. No. 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 So um, I reassured him that he says, Will I be able to take tablets by next week? I went, No. I said, You'll have, you'll be taking tablets in about half an hour. Easy. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. So he's like, Will I be able to take them next week? And you're like, No, you'll be able to take them in half an hour. Within half an hour, yeah. And mum, you could, mum was quite anxious as well because she knows a son and she knows that trying to get paracetamol into him or anything like that was a real struggle. So when we did the pill training with this boy, he was willing to engage, which is a big thing. You, they need to want to do it. And he did want to do it. Um, and I took him step by step as to what he had to do. And he couldn't understand how easy it was. So we, we've gone from a child who was frightened to take tablets to then he, he said to me, I'm excited to look forward to taking my next medication now because I can actually swallow a tablet in a capsule. 
and he went through the whole every size all the way up to the end and he was so proud of himself like I was so proud of him as well but he was so proud of himself the way that he, he couldn't believe what he had done and his mom was in awe and he actually told me that it's actually changed his life and it actually helped his journey in this hospital because he was in here a long time recovering and he actually said that you have made my time in this hospital so much easier by working with you from the beginning. If I had never worked with you, I would have struggled all the way through my recovery. So that in itself is a massive, massive thing. And it was huge to him. He even wrote us a thank you card, um, gave me a little gift and I wanted to give him a hug, but I wasn't allowed. Um, but I told him I wanted to hug him. Um, and I did shed a little tear because he was so grateful, like what we did for him. And they kept praise and pharmacy all of the time. And he says one of the top people who've helped him throughout, he says, I was way up at the top of that list. So that makes my job worthwhile. That's why I do my job, because I, I love it. That's so powerful. It is. It has made a massive difference to him. It's all about patient care as well. You know, and it's not, and it's about money, obviously. It's saving, it saves a lot of money converting liquids to tablets. But it's all about the patient and letting them know that it's so much easier to swallow a tablet than it is to have numerous liquids that taste horrible. You know, it's it's just so easy, yet so effective. The thing that stands out for me is, is your belief, your absolute belief that it's going to work. Because and it does work. I make it work <laughs> because it's so easy. This this is the thing. It's so easy like I've got that confidence and you take that confidence in the room and show that patient that you know they are going to do it they believe they are going to do it and they do do it because it is so easy I know I keep saying it's so easy but it is but it's really interesting I think the technique of teaching people to swallow pills is simple but you have that gift of bringing that confidence into the room and that is a confidence that the patient can then take away and use in other parts of their recovery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and so, I mean, I think that as a pharmacy technician, here's a child who spent six months in hospital who mm -hmm. says the pharmacy technician is the person who has transformed their hospital stay as much or maybe more than the doctor's. He said so, yeah. <laughs> he did say so, yeah. He was very grateful. And that makes my job so much more worthwhile. Just helping, helping the kids. This podcast was created by Medisense. You can find more podcasts and other creative learning resources on our website at www.medisense.org.uk.